Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to welcome absolutely everybody here to the National Library, those of you who have come from nearby and those of you who have come from much further away. Uh, you're very welcome. On special occasions like this, I like to remind everybody that this is your National Library. It's not our National Library, it's your National Library. And we hope to welcome you all back in the near future and have a chance to interact with some of the 10 million items we hold in our wonderful collections. After my own brief remarks, there'll be a performance by Frankie Gavin and his family who performed for your father 50 years ago. Uh, and I will then ask Caroline and her daughter Tatiana to officially open the exhibition. And following that, Minister Dean, and who we're also very welcome here today, will conclude the uh, ceremony this afternoon. 50 years ago, thousands and thousands of people, both in Ireland and the US, worked very hard to make President Kennedy's visit to Ireland the huge success that it was. This year, a smaller, much smaller, but equally enthusiastic group of people came together, both in Dublin and in Wexford, and we welcome all of those from the Wexford side of this uh, wonderful commemoration and celebration today, uh, to work on this historic, uh, to, to work on, on celebrating the historic visit. I just wanted to take a few moments to thank those who have been involved in the exhibition here today. Firstly, our partners, and in, uh, in no order at all, but the great team at the US Embassy, led by our fantastic great friend, John Hennessy Nyland, who I know is here with us today, with Susan, with Chris, and with Damien, or Dermot, I should say. To the JFK Library in Boston, and we're delighted to have Tom Putnam, who gave a great presentation here yesterday with us. And not only is Tom with us in person, but he was also able to bring some artifacts from the JFK Library to actually be in our exhibition here. Uh, and I'm delighted that we have Tom. And if you look in the case quite near to Tom, you'll see some of those very special items he was able to bring with him. And we hope to take a look at that case when, when we've concluded. To our local partners as well, obviously we had great help from uh, local institutions. To Zoe and Katrina from the National Archives, to Gordon O'Sullivan and Dermot Ferreter to help with some of the historical interpretation, to the team at the National Museum, and obviously we'll see some artefacts from the National Museum, to Caroline Stevens, Liam Wiley, Bree Doolan and Warren Laffin from RTE, another great partner for us here at the National Library. And we're also especially grateful to our parent department and to our minister and to his official Nala Dunaku, who have so kindly funded the NLI JFK Poetry Scholarship, which the minister will speak a little bit about later on. Thank you, Minister, and thank you uh, to those in the department. Finally, we only have a staff of 88 here at the National Library, and when I counted up, at least a quarter of them were directly involved in the delivery of this exhibition here today. So I want to take uh, just a moment to thank all of them, to thank uh, Matthew Keynes, our conservator, Nikki, who works so directly on the installation, Breed and Maureen Connell, Francis Clark, Mark Hardy, who kept the place clean and organised over the last few days, Carol Maddock, my own great PA, Orla Sweeney, Kira Kerrigan, Noel Stapleton and the team in the digitization studio, Willie Doyle and Ben Crane, Brenda, who works with us on the press and the media, Liz, Stephen, and all of our science and arts attendants. For the most, and I want to thank them most sincerely for all their hard work over the last couple of months. I do have to single out one person to thank on my staff, and that's Catherine McSharry, who many of you will have interacted with over the course of the last few months in planning today's exhibition. I want to pay special tribute to Catherine for the wonderful work she did uh, getting us to the, here today. So thank you, Catherine. And now I will pass to Frankie, who can reprise what he did when he was six years of age with the members of his family, who I think were uh, seven and eight at the time. So again, it's a revival tour, I think, for, for Frankie and his family, who will play now for you, and then we'll pass on. Frankie, over to you. Well, first of all, it's so much sure an honor to be here on um, this special occasion, and uh, we have the honor of playing one of those very, very small children by the fourth actor, which later on. Uh, and we're going to play the children who played on that very day. This is another tune called The Boys of Wexford. Which is a nice march, and we'll play that and then we're going to follow by a nice swift Irish breeze. So we hope you enjoy this too. Thanks for having us here.
Thank you very much. And that, it's not often that we have music in the library. We're normally saying, shh, keep the noise down. So you're very welcome. Come back again. And Carol and Tatiana, I'd like to ask you to open the exhibition. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you all for welcoming us here. Uh, it's wonderful to see how libraries are becoming centers of community uh, and bringing us all together, just as they always have. Um, there are many members of my family here. I'd like to recognize my aunt, Ambassador Jean Kennedy Smith, who uh, was with my father 50 years ago. And uh, my cousin Kathleen Kennedy Townsend is here, and my cousin uh, Congressman Patrick Kennedy is here, and I'm sure there's others, but um, anyways, all of us are thrilled to be here, and we've tried to send a representative group uh, over to Ireland um, here with my three children. Uh, and I think all of us are incredibly grateful um, to the um, National Library for this exhibition, um, and, uh, and I speak here also on behalf of the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library Museum uh, with our director, uh, Tom Putnam. Um, and I know that all people in the embassy and Ambassador Collins have worked so hard to make this celebration possible. Um, I also want to thank the people of Ireland for their generosity to the Kennedy Library. Uh, which has helped make it possible for us to digitize President Kennedy's papers so that um, you no longer have to visit Boston, but they're accessible worldwide. Um, and we've created, thanks to you, an Irish heritage collection, uh, which is available to scholars and students and researchers who study the source of my father's inspiration and seek to find inspiration of their own. Uh, my father was a student of history, and he would be proud that he has become a part of Ireland's history as well as of America's. He also always looked to the future, confident that young generations would dedicate themselves to ch solving the challenges of their time, just as he had. In keeping with his belief that the best is yet to come, I'd like to introduce now my daughter, Tatiana, to say a few words. Um. I'm honored to be here today speaking on the 50th anniversary of my grandfather's visit to Ireland. I'm especially humbled to be paying tribute to his trip at your National Library. I know he and really my entire family owe a lot to our Irish heritage, our good looks, our humor, our intelligence, and of course, our humility. I can only imagine how proud he would be to see the cooperation between this library and his presidential library in Boston, his home and home to so many Irish and their descendants. Thank you to the U.S. Embassy here in Dublin, as well as the National Archives and the Irish Broadcasting Company, RTE, for making this possible. I especially want to thank Minister Jimmy Deanahan, Director Fiona Ross, Catherine McSherry, and all of you for having us here. Thank you also to John Hennessy and Ireland from the U.S. Embassy and Tom Putnam from the JFK Library for making this all happen. I think President Kennedy would be so pleased by this exhibit, in part because it teaches us all about the history of his visit, but more so because it presents an interesting interaction between memory and the future. Memories of his visit on both sides of the Atlantic and a future promise of cooperation and collaboration between this country and his own. The online portion of this exhibit definitely illustrates what his trip has meant in both of our homes over the last 50 years. And continuing in that tradition he began, it carries on his hope for a new era in which our two countries have a sense of their shared future as well as a common past. My grandfather lives in my imagination mostly in his words, as I imagine he does for many of those who never knew him. He is, in a quintessentially Irish way, deeply, <clears throat> um, sorry, he, in a quintessentially Irish way, deeply understood the power of words to inspire and educate, and his vast knowledge of literature and history makes me appreciate how fitting it is that we are honoring his legacy at the National Library of this country he loved. But he also lives on in the words of those he admired, many of which were written on this very island, a place blessed as much by its natural beauty as it is by the Irish themselves. In his speech before Eroctus in 1963, uh, he borrowed the words of the Irish playwright George Bernard Shaw and quoted George William Russell, the Irish poet and activist, who said, I believe profoundly in the future of Ireland, that this is an isle of destiny, that that destiny will be glorious, and that when our hour is come, we will have something to give to this world. He recognized then, as I do now, that he was visiting a country whose sons and daughters can count some of the world's best poetry, prose, and drama among the many gifts they have given the world. It is particularly humbling to think that I am speaking at the National Library in the island home of W.V. Yeats, James Joyce, Oscar Wilde, Samuel Beckett, Seamus Heaney, and Sean O'Casey, among so many others. 
Your mother air is always young, do ever shining in twilight gray, wrote Yeats. To some, it may seem unbelievable that such a small island can boast so much genius. Those people, however, have never had the privilege of visiting this place, and they are certainly not Irish. Ireland gave its writers endless inspiration from her natural beauty, which was matched by the imagination, creativity, and talent that all Irish carry within them. It is these talents that have allowed generation after generation, wherever they may live now, to make art from Ireland's struggle. Fifty years ago, as President Kennedy looked forward to Ireland's future and acknowledged its brave history, he knew that Ireland could and would give more to the world than it had been allowed to do in the past. He saw that Ireland had sent her people to every foreign shore to seek a better life. The millions of Irish who made their home in America, who built so much of America's infrastructure, who enriched its cities, and who fought its ethnic prejudice, are a shining example of Ireland's influence on the world. Their example taught my grandfather and countless other Irish Americans lessons in strength and resilience. Both the courage of his Irish ancestors and the opportunities in America made it possible for him to be president and for me to be standing here today. He also knew that Ireland is the home of the Irish, a courageous and self-reliant people, which meant his future would only grow brighter as it has. I know he would have applauded Ireland's new position as a place where immigrants from all over the world can thrive. Speaking to the Irish, but intending the message to be heard far beyond its island shores, he said, let them remember the constancy, the faith, the endurance, and the final success of the Irish. And that is exactly what we are doing here today. I'm so happy to be able to stand here with my family and all of you and honor my grandfather in the capital city of the island nation where his story and all of our stories began. Thank you very much. That was wonderful, and, and thank you. And now I'll call on our Minister Deanahan to say the concluding remarks. Jim. Uh, thank you, uh, Director, Caroline, Edwin, your family, Tatiana, uh, Rose, and Jack, uh, Jean, members of the Kennedy family, members of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the Oireachtas. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed an honour for me to be here today to mark the opening of the JFK Homecoming Exhibition. This exhibition and a range of other events which have taken place this month have all been organised to coincide with the 50th anniversary of the visit of the US President John F. Kennedy to Ireland. This visit left an indelible mark on Ireland and still remains in the consciousness of those who were there to experience it. In 1963, we were a young republic. John F. Kennedy was a young president. And because of his background, his family, and his ancestry, the Irish people felt the strongest possible affinity with and warmed for President Kennedy, then a leader amongst leaders on the international stage. The impact of the Kennedy visit to Ireland was seismic. To put it very simply, President Kennedy was both loved and respected by the people of Ireland. Because of the affinity that the people of Ireland felt for John F. Kennedy, they had cheered him to the White House in 1961. Two years later, they cheered him wherever he went in Ireland. John F. Kennedy's election as president in 1961 was a seminal moment, too, in the history of Irish America. To many within that community, he represented all that they could become and gave them hope for the future. He made them proud to be part of the Irish-American community. It was as if the Irish had finally made it in America after years of struggle. He changed the image of the Irish in America. From then on, being Irish was a badge of pride and his achievement made people feel equally proud of being both Irish and American. By 1963, Ireland had experienced tremendous turmoil in the short history, as first a free state and then a republic. The decade before the visit had seen Ireland lose a generation through immigration. Half a million people had left Ireland over the course of the 1950s. 
The people who came out to cheer President Kennedy in their thousands had sons and daughters, brothers and sisters spread across the globe, especially in America. They welcomed President Kennedy like a returning son. John F. Kennedy himself underlined the depth of his feelings for Ireland, which he referred to as, not the land of my birth, but it is the land for which I hold the most affection. That affection was enthusiastically returned by those who came out to see him. As the Taoiseach of the day, Sean Lamas said, it wasn't so much the enthusiasm of the crowds, the cheers, the general outpouring of welcome to him, as what he seemed, as, he, as what he sensed in them. They weren't asking for anything, it was just enthusiasm for himself as a person. Today, over 70 million people worldwide claim Irish ancestry. Many of them reside in the United States. The 80,000 people who lined the streets of Dublin to welcome President Kennedy in 1963 were echoing this link. They were also remembering all those who had departed from these shores and who had never forgotten their links to home. Indeed, in his address to the giant houses of the Oireachtas, President Kennedy said, and I quote, And so it is that our two nations, divided by distance, have been united by history. No people ever believed more deeply in the cause of Irish freedom than the people of the United States. And no country contributed more to building my own country than your sons and daughters, end quote. President, he, President Kennedy also noted Ireland's growing place on the international stage in his address. And I quote, from Cork to the Congo, from Galway to the Gaza Strip, from this legislative assembly to the United Nations, Ireland is sending its most talented men to do the world's most important work, the work of peace. In a sense, this export of talent is in keeping with an historic Irish role. But you no longer go on as exiles and immigrants, but, from, but for the service of your country and indeed of all men." In quote. President Kennedy's visit, therefore, came at a time when Ireland was growing in confidence as an independent republic. It also marked a key point in the developing cultural and political ties between the then relatively young Republic of Ireland and the United States. These are ties which have grown over the years, and indeed the ties between Ireland and the Kennedy family have remained particularly strong. His sister, Jean Kennedy Smith, served as U.S. Ambassador to Ireland from 1993 to 1998, and her supportive role in the Good Friday Agreement and in the peace process should be acknowledged here this afternoon. Any time the ambassador decided to come to Kerry, I was her guide. I took her to places like the Blasket Island and the Belly Bunny and Golf Course and to many other places. So I had a, an intimate knowledge really of the role that she was playing in the peace process at that time. And I must say it was a very, very significant one. She did trust some people, she believed them, and I think that history has proven that she was right. <laughs> Her brother, Ted Kennedy, who served in the United States Senate for almost 47 years, was a longtime friend of Ireland and also played a key role in the peace process. And today we are delighted that John F. Kennedy's daughter, Caroline Kennedy, is here for this important occasion. I have a very vivid recollection of President Kennedy's visit and the national sense of pride and joy that it fostered. That visit instilled a new confidence in an island trying to find its way in the Cold War world of the early 60s. It was undoubtedly a great boost to Irish self-esteem and to national morale at that time. One of my abiding memories from the visit was the address by the Mayor of Limerick, Francis Condell. At the time in Ireland, few women were in positions of political power. It was important for many people to hear Mayor Condell welcome the President 
in the articulate, humorous, and moving way that she did. John F. Kennedy described her address as, and I quote, the best speech that he had heard since coming to Europe. The role that she played and the speech that she made struck a chord with me and with many people and stayed with me ever since. President Kennedy was a visionary in many things. He was a staunch supporter of the space, space program. This sowed the seeds of many of the new technologies that have been developed since and that we use in our daily lives. And even 50 years ago, he could clearly see the serious issues that related to inactivity resulting in obesity and overweight and that what this would cause for the health of both America and the world. As an aspiring athlete back then with a keen interest in all sports, President Kennedy's clear concern about fitness resonated with me. This he set out to challenge through the President's Council on Physical Fitness. But it is, it is his vision for the arts that I want to particularly refer to today. President Kennedy's love of the arts shone in his presidency and indeed in his speeches before entering the White House. In his off-quoted Harvard address in 1956, he said, and I quote, if more politicians knew poetry and more poets knew politics, I'm convinced the world would be a better place in which to live. He went on to utter some of the most visionary words ever said by a politician about the arts, words that resonate to this day. And I quote, the highest duty of the writer, the composer, the artist is to remain true to himself and to let the chips fall where they may. In serving his vision of the truth, the artist best serves his nation. And the nation which disdains the mission of art invites the fate of Robert Frost Hardman, the fate of having, and I quote, nothing to look backward to with pride and nothing to look forward to with hope. It is therefore with immense pleasure on the occasion of this exhibition and in the presence of our honored guest Caroline and her family that I wish to inaugurate the John F. Kennedy National Library of Ireland Poetry Scholarship. Under this scheme, scholarships in poetry will be awarded to young students each year. With the comments that John F. Kennedy made about poetry and the arts during the time as president, I can think of no better way to mark the important occasion than through this scholarship program. And now in closing, I would like to make a presentation to Caroline. I quoted earlier the famous comment that President Kennedy made when he referred to Ireland as not the land of my birth, uh, but it is the land for which I hold the most affection. Of the millions who left our shores over the centuries, the Kennedy family is certainly one of the most famous and more loved of all. Ireland took great pride in John F. Kennedy, and we continue to take great pride in the many achievements of the Kennedy family, including the recent election to Congress of Joe Kennedy. Today, they marked the 50th anniversary of the visit to Ireland by her father. I'm delighted to pre present Caroline Kennedy with a special edition of the Certificate of Irish Heritage. John F. Kennedy described his visit to Ireland as the happiest days of his life. I hope for you, Caroline, and for Tatian, and for Rose and Jack, that this will be one of the most important occasions of your life, and the next four days will be the happiest days of your life. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here for this really very special occasion to show true gratitude to the Kennedy family for what they have achieved for Irish America, but what they have done for this country as well. And we're all very proud of you, and it's great just to be part of this great occasion. So, thank you very much. Thank you. And um, this is just a certificate of Irish heritage. It's from the Kennedy side, but also we have a certificate from the Fitzgerald side as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much.
Oh yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the formal part of the proceedings this afternoon. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you all. Please stay around and see the exhibition. And uh, thank you, Minister. Thank you to the family. Thank you.